again, I welcome all of you uh, for this course. For this course, second week, but we haven't started any of the uh, texts yet. Today, inshallah, we're going to start the first lesson. But let me just uh, repeat what I said earlier before the Salat, that the main purpose of, of this course is not that you uh, become an alim or a scholar or a uh, alima or a female scholar. It is really to bring you closer uh, to the Quran. So don't start giving fatwas after this course because you're not, not licensed to give fatwa. Uh, so this is really for yourself or for myself to learn uh, the language of the Quran. You know, when you stand in the Salat, we understand what we are uh, read, what we are listening to and what we are uh, reading inshallah. If there are any questions, <laughs> after half past eight we will take questions. Uh, uh, during the uh, lesson, if you're not sure, just write it down, make a note, and then inshallah we'll explain it after half past eight for those brothers and sisters. Uh, who would like to stay behind? This up is a bit of sound. Just increase a little bit. Just increase a little bit. So, inshallah, we'll begin. Uh, and I said in my uh, introduction last week that this is for everyone. This is not just for beginners. It is for any sort of level of Arabic that you have. This will help you, inshallah. It will help you uh, to reconnect uh, with the Book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And really, most importantly, is that I asked uh, the class last week. Uh, how many of you actually know the meaning of the, uh, the Qur'an? Uh, and not the actual Qur'an, the actual Salat. And there's a few sisters and brothers who said yes, majority who said no. So Alhamdulillah, today we will start with the, the beginning. And when we start anything new, it is good to start with A'udhu Billah, which is to seek refuge uh, from uh, the accursed shaitan, yeah, from the shaitan. Anything that we start off with, uh, we must start with the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That will also uh, make the shaitan disappear. Because I was mentioning this last week, that the shaitan will say to you that, you know, why do you need to go on a Thursday night to the masjid uh, to learn about the Quran? He will whisper in your ears, you know, from time to time. So remember to decide, A'udhu billahi min ash rajim So how the uh, text works is on each slide, you will have the Arabic in red, and at the bottom you will have word for word <coughs> translation. Uh, and usually how we, we repeat it, it's quite simple. Uh, obviously we recite it before Surah Al-Fatiha or before we start reciting the Quran. Uh, so let's study uh, this beautiful verse of the Quran. Yeah? Let's, let's study it and let's try to understand uh, what, each, what each word means. Yes, yeah? so I want you to inshallah repeat after me. Uh, after I have gone through each word, inshallah, uh, word by word. So, A'udhu, uh, A'udhu, I seek refuge, I seek refuge, Billahi, Billahi, in Allah, in Allah, Mina Shaytan, Mina Shaytan, from Shaytan, from Shaytan, Ar Rajim, Ar Rajim, the outcast, the outcast. So, A'udhu, so you are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you're seeking His help and you're seeking His refuge and you seek His protection. The, the root words, <coughs> as you see underneath, is Ain Waw Dhal. But don't get too confused about that. What I want you to check is what's on the left hand side. And that will tell you how many times this word occurs in what? In the Quran. A'udhu. Yeah, this, is, this is, occurs once. A'udhu, A'udhu occurs once in the Holy Quran. So remember that. Billahi. When we say Billahi, this actually word is mentioned how many times in the Quran? 2,550 approximately. It means in Allah or by Allah. It, it can have both the meanings. Billahi. In Allah or by Allah. So Billahi is, 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 is divided into two parts. Allah, as you know, is the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ba is a preposition which is used in front of nouns. Be in or with. Be Allah. It's actually be Allah, but you join it becomes Billahi. Min. This is also a common, uh, common word in the Quran. It is repeated how many times in the Quran? Yeah, 2,471. So the, the translation for this word is quite simply means min, from. From, min. Other meanings also 
uh, appear with the same uh, word which we'll go through later on, inshallah. As shaitan. The shaitan. Al is obviously this word is made of two parts, alif lam, uh, and then the shaitan. The shaitan. So al means the shaitan means obviously the shaitan, uh, the sh Satan. So this word also, the plural of it is shayateen, shaitan and shayateen. Mm -hmm. And how many times is it repeated in the Quran? 88. 88. 88. You know what shaitan means. He is your enemy and take him as your enemy because he is the ar-rajim. And again, you see the alif lam here. Before the rajim, it is basically two separate words put together uh, to make it a ar-rajim, the outcast. Mm -hmm. And this is re repeated how many times in the Quran? Six times, and you know what it means, rajim. And we'll explain uh, what rajim, what rajam means, rajim. Mardud. Mardud. Yeah. In Urdu, it is mardud. In uh, English, it means the one who has been thrown out of Jannah because of his arrogance. Yeah. When he was told to bow down uh, to Adam, we know that the shaitan uh, is far away from uh, from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and also. He is the one who was rejected and was thrown out of Allah's mercy because of his rejection to bow down uh, in front of Adam. So, remember anything that starts with the Ra, Jim, and Meme, remember this in your mind, it means something uh, that has been rejected or that someone who's outcast or someone who has been thrown out of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Raja means to throw. Rajam. Rajam, yes. Yeah? So you know that when you go to Hajj, Rajam. It's from the same root word, inshallah. Okay. I want you guys to um, practice this <coughs> once I've gone through the... Because ar rajim has a bit more meaning to it. But very, very briefly, we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is above everything. Yeah, He is above all of us. And He knows what we think. So we should recite the above, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajim, with firm belief in Him, Jalla wa ala, that He would respond our request because he is the only one who will protect us from the shaitan and who is the shaitan he is as i mentioned the biggest and our most dangerous enemy yeah, he's very clever he knows how to trick us you know how to how to uh, you know make us go astray and how to slip now look what he did to our father adam alayhi salam but this was also written for him to be uh, you know to leave the jannah and to come down onto earth he made Adam even slip up in Jannah. And none of us are smarter than Adam alayhi salam. He's our father. And he has told us in the Quran that the shaitan, Allah has told us that the shaitan will attack us from the right, from the left, from the front, and from the back. Even though we cannot see him, nor can we hit him, you know, you can't see the shaitan. You know, people sometimes they claim that they've seen the jinn, but that's also imagination. Maybe they've seen something else. We cannot hit him, we cannot kill him. No can we convince him to become a good person because he has taken this upon him that I'm going to, you know, uh, obviously misguide the people, uh, the, the ins on the earth. And it is mentioned the only solution is to write, is to recite, A'udhu Billahi min shaitan rajim And this will allow you to have the complete protection uh, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why was he thrown out of the Jannah? Because he disobeyed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he wanted to become arrogant, he became arrogant uh, and this same regime wants us to follow him and become like, he wants us to become arrogant, he wants us also to become the outcast, he wants us all to be from outside the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala therefore the, it is said that be aware of the attacks of the shaitan at all times, be aware he's there at every corner, even in your salah he's there and he comes to you and he, he starts putting doubts in your mind that you haven't recited Al-Fatiha properly, you haven't in the Ruku, you haven't in the Sujood, these are all waswas which you should block with A'udhu Billahi. And each one of us has a shaitan with him or her and he is continuously attacking us in our home. Uh, that should be uh, attacking, not attaching, in us in our home, uh, office, market, while we are on our mobile phone, not in the Salat obviously, outside the Salat, and when we are with our friends, we should be in a continuous, this is really the, 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 the struggle, the jihad on nafs, which we should be concentrating uh, at the foremost in these times. So, safety first, we should always have this on our lips whenever we start anything, uh, anything good, we should always decide, A'udhu Billah. And this is one of the first habits that we will learn of Surah Al-Fatiha. So Surah Al-Fatiha has 12 habits, 
This is number one that we should decide. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim So I would like you to become into pairs of te two. Teach this. And how I want you to teach it, very, very be uh, uh, basic, is you recite A'udhu billahi and then you, you translate it to your partner min ash-shaytan rajim from shaytan the outcast. And teach your partner at least twice. And then swap around. And once you finish, inshallah, we will carry on uh, to the next bit, inshallah. So, alim, teach. And when I say inshallah, class, <coughs> then you shall uh, you turn around and you uh, look at the examples. So, alim, teach one another. Exactly. A'udhu billahi or he? A'udhu billahi. A'udhu billahi. He. 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 A'udhu billahi. You could teach one another. Yes, you don't need any notes. I'm going to go to the house. i to go to the the house. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. i the they're on the computer. What we do is not any folks in the sense they're outside. It's quickly grabbing the camera's device. What do we do? Of each one, you just need five more of each one if you can. Just let it print it. And then you get to the release of the sisters. Just stay with three of each if you can. Cross on the side. They're all in the back. Yes, class. Mm -hmm. Has everyone had a chance to, to teach? Was it quite straightforward or did you feel a bit shy or it's okay? How did the brothers do? Yeah. You're getting some more uh, copies each other before you go. Before you go and show you so, one of the benefits from teaching is that, inshallah, you will, uh, you, will, you will keep to memory what you have taught to someone. Because the best way to keep to memory is to teach others. So, whenever you have something that you learn, try to pass it on to your family, your children, your husband, your wives, etc., so that you can, uh, inshallah, it will stay with you for longer. And in this uh, lesson I mentioned level, we will cover. Uh, seven surahs and the adhkar of the salat, you know, how we decide the salat. Seven surahs and the, the actual recitation of the salat, full salat, inshallah. Simplified grammar you will use, uh, and also the hundred most uh, common dialogues in the Arabic language from the, uh, from the Quran. Also, you will work on some of your tajweed as well. It will also improve some of your tajweed, like the Haji Sahib was asking. Is it A'udhu Billahi or Billahi? It is actually A'udhu Billahi. So that is the difference. If you say A'udhu Billahi, it can actually change the meaning. So we'll try to pick on some tajweed as well if we can. So they're very grateful for Haji Sahib for picking that up. A'udhu Billahi. Very good. Also, you will learn to recite effectively with tajweed and with imagination and with, with true feeling that you are actually having a dialogue with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you'll also learn how to bring these surahs into your life and the adhkar in 20 lessons, inshallah, in 20 hours of lessons. Before we go on to the grammar, uh, there are some problems which we have in the salat, and this is for all of us, not just, you know, pick it anyone, that we just recite very fast in the salat. Yeah, we try to finish the salat very, very quickly. And this is something we should try to avoid, because it's not good, it's not respectful, uh, that if somebody spoke to us like that, we wouldn't like it. Yeah, so how is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala going to accept somebody who just comes to his salat quickly, does it and goes, you know, a few minutes, he does his three rakats, four rakats, two rakats, and then he disappears. This is not the right way. 
uh, to perform your salah. So talk slowly and know how you are speaking amongst yourselves and how you can better that. And again, you know, we just don't just try to, you know, treat the salah as, uh, you know, just to take it off that I've done the salah and that's it. You know, no, th you know, treat it as something that you want to uh, thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, that he's the greatest and you not forget him uh, and be sincere in that, you know, be truthful to what you are saying <coughs> to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he knows what is in our hearts. He knows what is in our hearts and what is in our minds. Also, we decide without any feelings. Uh, it's just recitation without proper ponderness and proper contemplations on the ayahs, on the uh, words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we wouldn't like that if somebody was talking to us in that way. So why, how, how could we accept Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, to accept that from us, Jalla wala, even though he's the most merciful and he's the most uh, gracious. This problem that we see now on the uh, whiteboard is a common problem. Was was, you know, the, the con continuous uh, sort of whispers of the shaitan. One of the sahabas, he complained to the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about the was was during the prayer. And he said, the shaitan comes between me and my prayers and my recitation, confusing me therein. You know, this happens to a lot of us, you know. We have this, uh, a lot of prime people complain about this, especially youngsters and even some, some of our elders. They complain about this. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi said to him, that is the devil called Khanzab. Khanzab. If he affects you, seek refuge in Allah from him and spit dryly to your left three times. So yes. Yeah. Yeah. So if you, are, if you have sisters next to you and brothers, don't <laughs> spit on them because that's not nice. They will actually might slap you. So just dry spit. Yeah. You know, like how we do shuf. Some of you might have seen the, the shuf. So that's three times. And this is actually a hadith which uh, you might, some of you might be aware of it. But you could turn to your left and just three times just blow. And that in shadow, you say a'uz billah as well three times. But this in shadow will help you to re, uh, come back to your consultation of your salah. The Sahabi said to him, or said that I did what the Prophet ﷺ uh, did. And he took him away from me, he took the shaitan away from me. So it works, you know, so don't uh, you know, ever uh, give less importance to a'udhu billah when it comes to waswas. So apply this hadith uh, whenever you, you have the waswas. And the, and the shaitan can come in different forms. He can come in the form where you don't see him. Sometimes he comes in the form of a person uh, trying to distract you from your salah. So also recite a'udhu billah on him as well. He might not like it or she might not like it, but I say at least I'm trying to seek protection from the ills of yourselves and also myself. So practice this. So close all the doors and windows of our houses, our souls, and block the thief, i.e. the shaitan, entering the house. Uh, and what are these doors and windows or the channels of the brain? It is said that the Prophet ﷺ says that you know, the shaitan, he actually runs in our vein uh, like the blood. So he is so close to us that he actually runs in our veins like the blood. So be aware of him and always block him out of your uh, cells. So that was the last slide of lesson 1a. We move on to lesson 1b but I just want to pause there for a few seconds. I want you just to uh, take note of what you have uh, listened to and then the last 10-15 last minutes we're going to do some basic grammar and I will explain to you what grammar is. But firstly uh, if there are any pressing questions then you may ask very very briefly at this point before we move on uh, to the next. So on your, in your books this will be slide number 88. That we, that's where we have uh, finished up to this point. So if there are any pressing questions, please do ask and then we'll move on in the next few minutes inshallah. So now, yes, so we have the, uh, if there's no questions, yes, uh, sorry brother, sorry. I didn't see you there. Sorry. Do you know the salam, uh, so you can say a'ud billah in your salam? Quietly, yes. Yeah. So if you're behind the imam, don't recite it too loudly. If you're on your own, then you can recite it a bit loudly if you want. Yeah, yeah so this is a qu common question because when you hear the hadith, if you're in a jama'at, 
you're not going to spit on the next person, you know, it's not nice, this is not from the manners. So you just quietly say, I will be that, and three times you blow. Dry, it's called dry spitting. It's what they do when they do the shof. You probably see the people do dumb. And the dumb is actually, it is proven if it's done correctly. If it is done according to the sunnah of the Prophet And the Quran, if it's recited upon people, it does work its miracle. The, the Quran is a shifa uh, for our hearts and also for our souls. And for our, yes, sorry. We've got one B, we've got one A, and then it goes to three, two A. Two A, okay. Is it the, have you got the other book with you? Or? Uh, the B, can we check? So you've got one A, two A. Okay, so the grammar one is missing. Two A. This is just one A. There's no two There's no one B, okay. If the, two, if the one B is missing, that is the grammar one. So what we do, inshallah, I'll go back. So you got all the A's. So you haven't got any of the... Uh, that's fine, it's not a problem. It's okay. So if you can find 2A in your slides, you got 2A. Okay, that's fine. Uh, all it means that next week we'll do two lots of grammar, which is fine. The grammar is not a lot. It's, the grammar is not very long. I, really, I don't want to pull you guys off the grammar from the beginning. Shall we? we will do the grammar uh, in its time. So we have to get the, the Bs, the 1B and 2Bs. Any questions from the sisters? No? Brothers? Okay, we move on to 2A. In that case, inshallah. So in this lesson, brothers and sisters in Islam, we will learn Al-Fatiha verse 1 to 3. Uh, and, and the grammar we will do next week, inshallah. And in this lesson, you will learn 14 new words uh, which occur in the Quran almost 1,192 times. Just in this lesson. So the first three verses of Surah Al-Fatiha, you will learn how many new words? 40 new words which are repeated 1,192 times. Yeah. This is the, 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 the chart or the barometer that we go by. Uh, and alhamdulillah, by the second lesson of the translation of the Quran, you will learn 27 new words which occur in the Quran almost 8,630. We, we described, we, we explained this last week that how the words are repeated and how this actually makes it easier for you uh, to pick up some of the, uh, the, the, the vocabulary and also it helps you in, in retaining the meaning. Yeah, so this is what this chart is about. So this has no link with the grammar, so don't worry. It's all about the, the, the word for word translation and the connection between different verses. And we said that in the Quran there are how many words? 4,500 years. And how many times have it repeated? 78,000. So the, at the top we have 78,000, which inshallah by the end of level 2, uh, you will have reached that. By the end of level 2, you will have reached 78,000 uh, repeated, off-repeated words in the Quran. So just have a look at that for those who have just uh, joined us today, that how important that, that figure is, you know, how easy it becomes. And I said last week as well, I mentioned that do not let the shaitan say to you, that you cannot do it, you know, it's, it's 78,000, you know, repeated words, how are you going to uh, remember all these words? I mean, shall we come to a, to a process how to remember the words? What's the best technique to remember the words? Every week, inshallah, you'll have some basic homework to do. Uh, two is obviously is to recite from the Quran any passage that we have done, and also five, uh, recite some from, the, from memory, you know, anything that you remember, like any uh, surah that you remember, recite them and practice them. You have two study books apart from the, the main book. Uh, one is for vocabulary and the other is obviously goes through the lessons one by one. So have a look at each one once you go home. So in order to uh, recap the, the lesson. Also we suggest that you have a one hour uh, you know, listening or reading yourself word for word translation and the grammar. And finally talk about the course, discuss it amongst your friends and shall try to bring them and interest them in learning about the, the kalam, the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also recite the different surahs which you will be learning uh, in the class. Don't forget the dua, Rabbi zidni ilma or Rabbi zidna ilma or Allah increases you know, in ilm, in knowledge and pray for your classmates. You know, the, you know, it is said that you pray for someone else, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is going to accept it if it is sincere. If it is a sincere dua, that's why when we have 
the nikah and any you know blessed uh, occasion, we ask the the, 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 the the attendees to make sincere dua for the couple because that is when Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is going to listen to the dua uh, for them, inshallah. Now, inshallah, if there's no questions, quickly for 10 minutes, I'm going to start Surah Al-Fatiha. And as you know, Surah Al-Fatiha, it is really a great surah. It is the first complete uh, surah of the Quran. And it is so important that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has asked us to repeat it every day, in every salah, in every raka, according to the majority of the scholars, that we must recite it in every raka. Especially if you're, if you're reciting the salah on, on your own. If you're behind the imam, there are certain exceptions which we'll go into later on, inshallah. So if we go back to the words of Ta'awwud, Billah, and also Al-Fatiha. Just these, just the words of A'awud Billah in Shaitan al Rajim and Alhamdulillah Rabbil till the end, they are in the Quran 9,000 times, roughly. That's how many times they are repeated. Let's look at the, uh, this uh, example. Just in this example, the red bits are where it is repeated. Obviously, you have Al-Ladina, Amin Al-Ladina, you have Billahi, Sirat Al-Mustaqim. All these are repeated. And when you hear these words, you should be able to, number one, understand what it's saying and understand uh, what, it, what the Quran is trying to say to you. Because don't forget, some words have different meanings depending on where they occur in the sentence. Or in the surah. So this is just an example of how easy you know you can pick up the common words in the Quran. This is again going to the uh, the stats of the Quran. At how many uh, pages are there in a in a normal Quran in a in a in a, in a, in a, in a fifteen line Quran? It is six hundred pages. 60, 600 pages in the normal Quran, and there are fifteen lines per page. So it makes it fifteen times six hundred, which is we said nine thousand uh, times, which is repeated. Uh, in the Quran. That's how many times Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is repeating these words to us. So just teach this amongst yourself before we go to the Bismillah. At how many pages in the Mus'haf? How many lines per page? And total lines are how many? 9,000 lines in the Quran. So Alim, teach this amongst yourself before we move on to Bismillah. Shana. Teach yourself. Okay, class. So that was just basically the lines per page and total lines of the Holy Quran. So we've done A'udhu uh, Billah. So there's also the second part which is called the Basmallah, Bismillah rahman rahim And there's something which we'll do now, inshallah, very, very briefly. we we'll do the translation and also we'll break it up into uh, word for word translation. So I just want you to repeat after me. Uh, I'm going to describe it in two parts here. Yeah. Bismillah. Bismillah. In the name of Allah. In the name of Allah, Ar Rahman, Ar Rahman, the most gracious, Ar Rahim, the most merciful. Now we're really all in one go. Bismillah, Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. Very good. Now let's break it up into bits. So Bismillah, Bismi <coughs> is obviously uh, made up of two uh, words, B and Ism. B Ism, in name. So there's no there here, but it means in the name. In the name. In the name. And then you have the, the root words which are C, Mim, Wow, which we'll discuss later on. 
Ism is obviously the name, or one name. Asma is plural, which means names. And this occurs how many times in the Quran? 39 times. 39 times. So you know Asma means names. More than one name. Asma Allah. In Asma Allah, the names of Allah. Asma al-Husna. These are the, the names of the 99 names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as you have probably heard previously. Bismillah means I start work or I start my study in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I start reading, I start reciting or start anything in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who is Ar-Rahman? So Raham, Raha means is the root word and each word has a root letters. Raha, Raha mean. So when you know the root letters, it becomes easy for you to know the translation. Ar-Rahman, the most gracious. In Ar-Rahman is has the ending Alif uh, and Nun Rahman. This is really something which shows you the intensity of his Rahm, of his uh, of his mercy, his graciousness. Because we know Ghadban here, it means somebody who's extremely angry, bursting with anger. Ghadban. Ghadban is somebody who is extremely angry. So Ar-Rahman is somebody who's extremely caring, not just caring, he's extremely caring and he's kind intensely merciful so you need three four uh, sentences to explain one word of Arabic. this is how great the arabic language is and how many times is ar-rahman mentioned in the quran 57 57, yeah, 57. so make note of 57 ar-rahim again is also made of the same root letters yeah rahamim rahamim ar-rahim the most merciful there's a difference in the two which we will describe so we know jameel Somebody who is beautiful, Kareem who is good mannered. Mm -hmm. So these two, you know, the Jameel, he's not beautiful one day and then the next day he becomes ugly. He's continuously beautiful. Yeah, Kareem is somebody who is good mannered today and tomorrow and Shari is also good mannered. So continuity. So Ar Rahim is somebody who is continually caring and kind, continually merciful, and that is only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even your own mother, she is merciful towards you, but her mercy cannot reach the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the difference in the two words. And how many times this uh, occurred in the Quran? 115. 115, yeah. 115. Ar-Rahim. So multiply the intensity in both these words. Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim. So I want you just to, inshallah, uh, practice after we've done uh, this bit, the pondering upon Bismillah. And then I want you to practice uh, this bit. So when we do the study, there are you know, five things which we do. We ask, obviously, evaluate, plan and propagate the message and then we, 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 you know, we contemplate on the meanings of the words. This is really how we do after we study. This is, this is, you have this in your, in your notes, inshallah. The first habit I mentioned, and the second habit is that we say Bismillah before we do anything, like eating, sleeping, reading, writing. And be confident, don't just say it, you know, without any belief that oh, I just say Bismillah Rahman. No, say it with confidence that He is Ar Rahman, He is always with you, and He will most definitely help you, without doubt. The more we ponder upon this fact and believe in the attributes, the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will feel the power and the effect of reciting Bismillah. Rahman means extremely merciful, Rahim is continuously merciful. Allah is Rahman as well as He is Rahim i.e. he is blessing us with heavy and the continuous shower of mercy. That is what Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim means. And don't forget Allah at happy occasions. Have a good opinion and hope in Allah at the time of trial. You know, not just that we remember him when it's, things are going well. Also at times of trial we should say that my Lord has always blessed me excessively. Extensively and definitely there is something good for me in this trial. You know, a lot of time people, they go through uh, difficulties in their life and they give up. So you should never give up and be in the hope and in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The third habit is that always have a positive thinking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because He is Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. He takes care of us. He fulfills our needs with love and kindness. He has created us and given us uh, the ears, the hands and feet. He has blessed us with parents, relatives and friends and He has made all the arrangements for us in our life. And there are many benefits of having positive thoughts about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like peaceful life, we have happiness, success, a good health inshallah, and also tranquility. And we have better relationships amongst ourselves. This is really a million times better than the Western concept of positive thinking. This is more than that. This is positive thinking at all times. 
where, where the going is tough and where the going becomes easy. So very, very quickly before we finish, I want you to teach your partner, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, uh, split it up, uh, the translation, and also if you want to write it down as well, inshallah. Then we'll come back and we'll finish off uh, for the questions uh, before we go. Jazakallah. Ali. What is the, the uh, notes? Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman Sister, yeah, <laughs> 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 Okay, class. Did everyone get a chance to teach? Yeah? Everyone told the Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Yeah? There's two more ayahs, inshallah, and then we will uh, pause here. Uh, like I said, it's not a, a race to finish, it's rather we do, inshallah, small bits. Alhamdulillah, you did a'udhu billah, you did bismillah. And inshallah, when we come to class next week, uh, because I'm going to try and be strict on time. You know, easily we get told that we're never on time, but we're going to be strict on time. Half past say we're going to let the brothers and sisters. Those who want to stay behind for questions, you're more than welcome. Uh, but I don't want you to think uh, that you know, we don't keep to our time. We try to keep to our time, inshallah. So we'll finish. We'll stop here. We'll, st we'll start Surah Fatiha next week, inshallah. Any questions, please?